Today we shall learn about finding the interquartile range and percentiles. But first, let us recap on finding the range of discrete data. The range is defined by the largest value minus the smallest value. Now, given a set of data here, what is the range of A? Yes, since the largest value is 15 and the smallest value is 1, the range of A is equal to 15 minus 1, which is 14. Next, let us look at how to find the range of root data. The range is again defined by the largest value minus the smallest value. And the range of the data here is equal to... Yes, the largest value is actually 60 and the smallest value is 35. And the range is equal to 60 minus 35, which is equal to 25. Next, we shall learn how to find the quartiles of discrete data. But first, let us learn a new term, which is interquartile range. It is defined by the upper quartile minus the lower quartile. Now, interquartile range is actually a measure of how spread out a data is. For instance, if the interquartile range is big, it means that the data is very spread out, and hence it is less consistent. Vice versa, if the interquartile range is small, it means that the data is less spread out, and hence it is more consistent. Now let us look at some examples on finding the quartiles of discrete data. Discrete data means that the numbers are not grouped together. Do you know where is the middle number here? Yes, the middle number here is 15 and we call this the median. Excluding this number here, do you know where is the middle of this set of numbers? Yes, it is 22 and hence we call this the upper quartile. And where is the middle for this set of numbers here? Yes, it is 7 and we call this the lower quartile. The lower quartile here is equal to 7, the median here is 15, and the upper quartile here is 22. Can you find the interquartile range? It is defined by the upper quartile minus the lower quartile, and hence it is equal to 22 minus 7 equals to 15. Now just to note that the 15 here and this 15 here are not related. Can you find the range? Yes, the range is given by the largest value minus the smallest value. And it is equal to 25 minus 5, which is equal to 20. We shall now look at another example on finding the quartiles. Do you know where is the middle? For this example, the middle is 10, and we call this the median. Now, excluding this number here, where is the middle of this set of numbers here? Yes, it is in between 15 and 90, and we call it the upper quarter. Now, do you know where is the middle here? It is between 3 and 4, and we call this the lower quarter. And hence, the lower quarter is equal to 3 plus 4 divided by 2. It is equal to 3.5. The median is equal to 10, and the upper quartile is equal to 15 plus 19 divided by 2, which is equal to 17. To find the interquartile range, we will use the upper quartile minus the lower quartile, which is equal to 13.5. Finally, to find the range, we have the biggest number minus the smallest number, which is 19 minus 2 equals to 17. To help you better understand how to find the upper quartile and lower quartile, we shall now look at yet another example. Now, where is the middle of this set of data here? Yes, the middle is actually between 14 and 70, and we shall call this the median. Now, where is the middle of this set of numbers here? Yes, it is between 18 and 20, and we call this the upper quartile. Finally, where is the middle of this set of numbers here? Yes, it is in between both 13 here, and we call this the lower quartile. 
Hence, the lower quartile will be equal to 13 plus 13 divided by 2, which is equal to 13. The median is equal to 14 plus 17 divided by 2, which is equal to 15.5. And the upper quartile is equal to 18 plus 20 divided by 2, which is equal to 19. To find the interquartile range, we will use the upper quartile minus the lower quartile, which is equal to 6. Finally, to find the range, we will have the biggest number minus the smallest number, which is equal to 10. Now, looking at these three examples, I hope you have a better idea of finding the median, upper quartile and the lower quartile. Yes, all you need to do is keep dividing the sets of data into half. Now we shall look at finding the quartiles of grouped data. And we usually do this by using the cumulative frequency curve. We shall start by finding the different percentile. Here we are asked to find the 40th percentile and the 70th percentile of the distribution here. The 40th percentile is given by the 40% of the total frequency. And hence we have 40 over 100 multiplied by 60. Now the total frequency can be found by the highest cumulative frequency points on the curve. By calculating, we have 24 here. Now one important thing to take note here is, to find any form of quartiles, you must use the curve and find the answers on the axis. So in this case, the 40th percentile will be 16 marks. Now what this means is that 24 is actually the position of the 40th percentile and the number of marks for the 40th percentile will be 16. To find the 70th percentile, we shall use 70 over 100 multiplied by 60 which is equal to 42. And this actually represents the position for the 70th percentile. To find the answer, we shall once again look at the axis using the curve and the answer will be 19 marks. The lower quartile of the cumulative curve is defined by the 25th percentile. The median is defined by the 50th percentile on the cumulative curve. And the upper quartile is defined by the 75th percentile of the cumulative curve. And to recall, the interquartile range is equal to the upper quartile minus the lower quartile. Let's just look at an example of how to do this. We are asked to find the median and the interquartile range of the distribution. Now, the median is defined by the 50th percentile, and hence we'll use 50 over 100 multiplied by 60. And again, the 60 here is actually the highest value of the cumulative frequency, and we will have 30 here. Now, 30 is actually the position. To find the answer, we need to use the cumulative frequency curve and the axis, and the answer will be 17 marks. Next, to find the upper quartile, we will have the 75th percentile and hence we will calculate 75 over 100 multiplied by 60 which is 45 and the number of marks will be equal to 19.5 the lower quota will be equal to the 25th percentile and we have 25 over 100 multiplied by 60 and we will have 15 to find the number of marks we need to use the x axis and it will be equal to 13.5 Finally, to find the interquartile range, we will have the upper quartile minus the lower quartile, which is 19.5 minus 13.5, and the interquartile range is equal to 6 marks. Now, do remember to write the units and to find the answers from the axis. We shall now look at one further example here. Now, which school has better results and why? Now, the median of these two distributions is actually at 30. And looking at the intersection points, school B is actually doing better because the median for school B is higher. Since the median of school B is higher, it means that on average it has better results because median is actually a measure of average. Next, we are asked to briefly describe these two distributions. Now, when we are asked to briefly describe the distributions, we shall always talk about the median and the interquartile range. In this case, it is clear that school B has a higher median and hence we will write on average school B's results or school B's marks are higher. Next, we shall look at the interquartile range and the interquartile range of school A is equal to 6 
while the interquartile range of school B is equal to 8.5. Now, what does this mean? Since the interquartile range of school B is higher, it means that school B's results are actually more spread out. Or you can say that school B's results are less consistent. Vice versa, you can write that school A's results are less spread out and hence it is more consistent. Now, writing either way is okay, but you must write about the median and the interquartile range. In summary, the range is given by the largest value minus the smallest value, and the interquartile range is equal to the upper quartile minus the lower quartile. Now, it is a measure of how spread out the data is. For cumulative frequency, we can find the upper quartile by using the 75th percentile, the median by using the 50th percentile, and finally the lower quartile by finding the 25th percentile. Now again, do take note that you must remember to find the values and read the answers from both axes. Finally, when asked to briefly describe two distributions, you must talk about the median by writing on average which is better, and talk about the interquartile range by writing which is more spread out or less consistent. Either that, you can write which is less spread out or more consistent. Well, that's all for this lesson.